So today I'll be going over some of the mycotoxins that we find in livestock feed. So first we need to know what a mycotoxin is. A mycotoxin is any toxic substance produced by fungi and mycotoxicosis is a disease that is associated with the ingestion of that mycotoxin. Mycotoxins are produced from cool and wet and or warm and humid environments and some of the feeds affected by mycotoxin contamination are corn, barley, peanuts, and wheat. Mycotoxins have a negative effect on domestic animal production by decreasing feed intake, decreasing reproductive health, decreasing disease resistance, and increasing food safety risk for humans. Some of the mycotoxins I will be discussing today are aflatoxin from the fungi strain Aspergillus flavus, xerolinone from the strain Fusarium granimerium, deoxynivalenol from the strain Fusarium graminearium, ochratoxin from the strain Aspergillus ochraceus, and fumonisin from the strain Fusarium monoliform. So the first mycotoxin I will be reviewing is aflatoxin. Aflatoxin is a carcinogen, which means it can potentially cause cancer. It is a, a hepatotoxin, which means it creates liver damage, and it also decreases disease resistance in our domestic species. It can affect corn and peanuts, although it affects peanuts the majority of the time, and the concern level for aflatoxin ingestion is 20 to 40 parts per billion. Next, we have xerolinone, which is known for its estrogenic effects. Xerolinone can cause enlarged uterus, swelling of the vulva, which is pictured here in this slide, abortion, and malformation of the reproductive tract, but more specifically, the malformation of the testes or the ovaries. Xerolinone can be found in corn and hay, and the concern level for xerolinone is at about 0.56 parts per million. Next, we have deoxynivalenol. Deoxynivalenol is a mycotoxin that affects pigs mostly. They're most sensitive to it. It is an emetic which induces vomiting, and it can cause feed refusal in most species, but most specifically swine, because they are most sensitive to it. Deoxynivalenol is present in wheat, barley, oats, rye, and corn, and the concern level for deoxynivalenol is 0.56 parts per million. Next, we have ochratoxin, which is also a carcinogen, but instead of being a hepatotoxin, it is actually a nephrotoxin, which means it causes kidney damage in our domestic species, as well as reducing feed intake in our domestic species. Ochratoxin is present in barley and wheat, and the concern level for ochratoxin is 0.25 parts per million. Finally, we have fumonisin, which is a mycotoxin which affects horses the most. One of the main diseases that happen in equine is leukoencephalomalacia, which is the degeneration of the equine central nervous system. It can cause neurotoxicity and hepatotoxicity in equine. It is present in corn grain feed, and the concern level for fumonisin is 1.1 to 3.3 parts per million. Here's a chart showing the different concern levels and potentially harmful levels for cattle, swine, and horses. Notice that aflatoxin is in parts per billion, while the rest of the mycotoxins I went over are in parts per million. There are two different categories of mycotoxin detection. There are quick tests and there are confirmatory tests. Quick tests are composed of ELISA, thin layer chromatography, and strip tests. These tests are meant to detect specific mycotoxins, so detecting one mycotoxin out of about 200, when there is also confirmatory tests, which is composed of high pressure liquid and or gas chromatography, which determines the level of mycotoxins in parts per billion or parts per million, as well as detecting several mycotoxins in a batch, so about 20 out of 200. Here's an example of our quick test. This is Lisa. 
This is an example of our high pressure liquid chromatography test, which is one of our confirmatory tests. There are a couple ways to prevent mycotoxin contamination. Three of them are keeping your feed dry, avoiding damage to your feed, and eventually storing your feed properly. These all lead to less moisture exposure, and moisture exposure will lead to fungi contamination and growth, which will eventually lead to maybe mycotoxin contamination of feeds. So you really want to store your feed quickly after harvest, decrease any insect exposure, and avoid storing grain over 12 to 13% moisture levels. And that's why we're excited.